All right, welcome back BMX enthusiasts. Today I've got another treat. This is another bike out of my collection uh, that I'm gonna showcase today for everyone to kind of get a good, uh, good view of what a uh, beautiful 1983 VDC Changa looks like. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the bike. I'm gonna talk a bit about, you know, how I pieced this together because it was pieced together. Just like all of my other bikes that you've seen on my, my channel, uh, the only other bike on my channel that was not pieced together was the uh, Hutch Pro Star, and which we all know by now that the Pro Stars were a complete bike. They did not sell them as frame and forks. However, this VDC Changa, and it's a beautiful example, as I probably will say it a million times, was uh, pieced together and they did sell them back in the day, you know, also as a frame and fork. Now, Growing up, I didn't see not at one of these VDC Changas. Uh, this company, VDC, uh, also called, uh, the owner's name is Forrest Dixon. So it's Forrest Dixon Company, if I got it correctly. VDC, just like most of the bikes back in the day, like the GTs, were also based out of Santa Ana. So that's, you know, obviously the, the BMX slash freestyle capital of the world, I think back then was uh, out there in California. Um, but, <clears throat> so, so that's that, you know, it's been a while since I put some um, videos out there, but I did want to spend some time and just kind of show everyone this bike. And I am going to go through every piece of the bike and talk a little bit about it. But, uh, you know, uh, just a little bit of uh, history here. So as a kid, when I used to see these Boris Dixon bikes on the magazines, you know, I never really paid a whole lot of attention to them. And it's not until you actually get one of these up in front of you and you start looking at all the, you know, the craftsmanship that goes into this thing and the design, it's, it's truly unique to this, to this bike. And it's, it's, I just love it, right? So, so when you, when I used to see them in the magazines, um, I'd see them more towards the back of the BMX action, maybe the middle of the BMX action, BMX plus magazines, and they were advertised there. Often to the right side, if I recall correctly, you had a form to fill out, right? You fill out the form, what you wanted, what color you wanted it, um, and then you would cut it out, send a check, and then sometimes I think you get like a free t-shirt or something like that with the bike, and then you know, you were off to build it any way you wanted to, right? Because these bikes weren't complete. Uh, I don't ever remember seeing them come out complete. So, so they also often sold as frame and forks, and, and uh, you know you could buy the handlebars and other components that they sold back then, and you know, obviously you could piece it together and build the bike the way you want it to be built, right? So. So here we go, you know, with this one here, let's talk a little bit about the color. You know, to me, what really stands out in this thing is the color. I mean, the color, this blue is an absolute beautiful blue, right? And so uh, my understanding is a person who I purchased it from, this blue was modeled after, uh, I think it was a mid 80s IROC Z28. And I don't know what color it is. It looks like a quasar blue or something maybe even deeper than that that GM had, but man, let me tell you, man, this color is just super beautiful. I don't think the camera's catching it. I've got it on a high quality setting on the camera, and so you maybe can see it. Now the decals, you've probably seen these decals, right? I mean, the chrome with the chrome outline, the Changa, man, does that look good. It's just like, it, it's just like born that way, right? But uh, we know that they didn't come in this color, right? They had Chrome was very popular for, for the VDCs back in the day. It is the BMX version. And yeah, they did have a freestyle version, uh, which is also a beautiful bike too. But um, anyway, I mean, I can keep talking about how beautiful it is, but, but why don't we uh, start up top here? We'll talk about the components. Um, like I said, I bought this as a frame and fork, uh, as well as the handlebars, already pa painted, or at least powder coated in this color. And it's, um, <clears throat> I decided to continue with the blue theme. I went really heavy with the blue, as you can see. And it's uh, really, really striking. You know, with the chrome details, it really makes it, makes it pop. And I'm gonna, you know, uh, talk about it. So let's start out with the top, right? These, uh, let's talk about the handlebars. So the handlebars are the VDC uh, monkey bars. <clears throat> and, uh, you can see the way uh, they designed it back then, right? It's like it's all like these pipes uh, that kind of 
uh, infuse with each other and all like very nicely welded together, right? It's kind of like a, a, a very much of a, I guess a design trait of BBC back then when they kind of take these pipes and put them all together. I mean, it's, again, it's unique to this bike. There's no other bike that I'm aware of that has this type of design. Beautiful, beautiful bars, and uh, wow, let me tell you, this is excellent. Moving over to the grips, what I put on here, again, very close match is these uh, dark blue Oakley uh, B2 grips, and um, you know, all the parts here, unless I say so, are all authentic, all from the 80s, um, all pretty much new old stock, right? And so these B2s are absolutely uh, beautiful um, on both sides. Let me focus in on that one. You get a good look at that, All right? So, and again, uh, great match. Up top here on the on the brake lever is a Diacomp Tech 3 uh, brake lever. That's the racing lever. This is also, if I recall, and I can't remember now, I believe this is also 1983 dated uh, on the inside. You'd have to, you know, kind of look in there uh, to see what date it is. And then, um, what I've matched it up with is a nice dark blue uh, brake cable. Now this brake cable isn't anything special. I think it's just a generic brake cable. I was look, trying to look for a Diacomp originally stamp brake cable in a dark blue color. I was unsuccessful. So in the end, I just said, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna go with this dark blue color, uh, which is a generic cable. Um, let's see, moving on down. Let's take a look at the stem and then move that, that, that pad out of the way. I'll talk about the pad in a second. So here we have uh, a beautiful, raw finished uh, Hutch Pro Racing stem, the Deep H. Uh, you can see here the original bolt and then the hardware that holds that bar down. Right, I was going to have this this powder coated, but then I, uh, or these chromes, but uh, I, I said forget it. Let me just leave it. Raw, raw aluminum looks really nice. I didn't want to high polish it. Left it just the way it was, and that's how you see it. Moving on down to the headset. What we have here is a Campy, um, Campy road bike. Now, if I can zoom in on it, uh, headset. Uh, very nice, all nice and chrome. Try and focus in on that if I can. There we go. But uh, yeah, beautiful headset. Works really well with this bike um, and so on. But again, take a look at that, how that frame comes into that head tube. Like those pipes, right? It's, it's just unbelievable. And it's just really nice, man. And then, and then they put that gorilla, um, <laughs> the gorilla picture right on top of that tube. Uh, super awesome. I love it. Drilled. The fork is drilled for the uh, for the front brakes if you wanted one, but I'm sticking to 1983 standards, and I think back then there was only one rear brake is what they allowed in racing. But the fork also just as beautiful as the frame. I mean, take a look at that. You know, look at look at these uh, decals and um, look at those dropouts. I mean, uh, beautiful, right? And that's on both sides. I think right about was down there. One little paint chip. Yeah. It's always gonna be something with these. But uh, let's come on the other side. Yeah, look at that. A little bit of dust. And again, this dropout is also very nice. Um, you know, very clean, that's what we like to see. And then uh, in terms of the wheel, since we're here, you know, we got the Tioga Competition ST tires. These are original, you know, Tioga Comp ST tires uh, from back in the day. These are new old stock. Um, holding up pretty well. You know, no cracking. Uh, I wouldn't say they're super soft. You know, they're not super soft. They're somewhat in between, right? Between super soft and, and, and stiff. So, but you know, given that this, this bike is not outside, it's in a, um, it's actually in my uh, basement, which is always either cool or warm, depending on the on the seasons, right? So they, they stay pretty good for the most part. 
Now, another feature of this bike that I totally love, and um, to me, it's like a big deal, are these Araya rims, right? These Araya's that are 20 by 1.75, you know, these are just absolutely mint, never used. I mean, look, there's not even a scuff mark on the side of that rim, right? Um, very nice Araya rims. Um, Especially this color, right? It's so hard to find. Even, even chrome, they're hard to find. But a blue, wow, right? That's great. And then let's not forget, right? Let's not overlook the fact that we've got these beautiful Hutch hourglass, you know, new old stock hubs on here, right? Really beautiful with the hollow axles, you know, all original hardware, right? And you can see the, the washers in there, you know, the, the bearings. A really nice example and uh, we're gonna see the same thing on the rear as well but uh, you know these pads let's talk about these pads and these pads are you know VDC uh, these reproduction and as you can tell they try to do whoever did it did a fantastic job on these pads I mean really nice they tried to match the color bike you know on the blue as you can see um, and then uh, we have the, the cover here that goes onto the stem cover, which I'm gonna loosely fit on for now. And uh, yeah, and then you can see the frame pad, also very nice. Um, so let's look at the frame a bit more. I'm just gonna come on down to the dropouts. You can see the dropouts are also very clean. It's exactly what we wanna see. But yeah, you can take a look at that. Come around here. Yep. And clean drop out over there as well. So the frame, as you guys can tell, is beautiful. Now, we got these bullseye cranks, huh? These are absolutely beautiful cranks. Now, I forgot what generation these were. It's been about a hot minute since I remember. But these are the ones with the hollow a tube in there. Look, you can see right through it, right? And they have the key, I guess, I don't know, these are, these are first gen, or second gen, I think they're second, I wanna say. But those keys, there's a key right there, I can see it in between the, 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 the tube, the split there. And, and it, it holds it in place, it's like a safety they put in there. Because you had the spleens, and then they were clamped down on the spleen, but just as a safety, they added that, and that little notch goes through and to the other side. I don't know if you could see that. It's a, a hollow uh, a spindle. But let me tell you, these cranks, um, cool thing about these, I bought these. They were pretty decent shape. They were painted. I had them uh, chrome plated, and the, the chrome plate was, was done. I mean, it's beautiful. Look, take, take a look at that chrome right i mean it's just absolutely beautiful and the stickers right these are original um i saved these stickers while they're being chromed and I, and I put them somewhere on both sides and i reused them so these are not reproduction stickers these are original now the other thing that's pretty cool about these cranks and i'm just gonna spin this again and i hone in on it Look at that, all the way in there. See that little sticker? Yeah, look at that. That was an original sticker, and it's got the patent number on it. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm just trying to read it. It's kind of hard to get in there. And that sticker was also on the cranks, and I saved that, right? I saved that sticker, and I stuck it right back on exactly where it was uh, when I got these back from Chrome. And I'm just gonna go to the other side. And show you guys the other side of the uh, cranks, okay? And um, again, you know, here's a bullseye sticker. Uh, looks absolutely beautiful. The chrome was absolutely great. Fantastic job. Uh, there's the the star or the uh, whatever you want to call it, the um, the drive gear, right? And uh, what else we got in there? I think we have. Are they chain? These are Sugino chain wheel bolts. I don't know if you can see that or not. Old Sugino chain wheel bolts. Um, I think they're going there. The sprocket is a 43 tooth. Made in good old USA. Right, what we see here, it says 
Keith Precision Products. Beautiful, right? And so again, I just love the fact that you could see right through there, right? Really nice cranks, and I thought these cranks, when I bought them, I'm like, this is, these cranks are going right on this bike. Now, another set of beautiful pedals, right? And a great example are these pedals right here, right? Um, and what do we got? We got, these are called the KKT uh, Lightning. Uh, they're obviously 9 16 right? Like, really, like, like I'll just call them pretty much new old stock, right? Doesn't get any better than that. Beautiful, even the ends are just absolutely beautiful, right? These are made in Japan, it's stamped on there. But super beautiful set. I'll show you the other set on the other side. I'll, I'll, I'll head on over to the other side of the bike so you can get a view of these pedals, okay? Pretty much same idea, right? KKT, Lightning, yeah, really nice. Uh, the chain isn't anything special. It uh, happens to be a blue colored chain. It's a uh, regular uh, KMC K710 chain, but it is blue, it does match the bike. Again, sticking with that blue theme. It looks really good. Yeah, look at that, it's like a candy apple blue. Totally love it. In the back here, let's, t let's, let's talk about this brake. This is a um, die comp um, rear caliper, right? Die comp MX-1000, this one's dated 1983. I even got an original, uh, the finned uh, brake pads, all right? This, this isn't red. I figure I throw off the color a little bit, but the fact that it matches the die comp sticker, I'm pretty cool with that, with having red brake finned um, uh, brake pads. But yeah, really nice, and even the, um, yeah, so you got the adjuster on there, very nice, and it's gonna get in there. So you can see the frame a bit more, you know, low rust. Again, look at that tube. Coming up here, we have an original OG, new old stock Hutch um, C-Post uh, Chrome Donut. Again, going with a little bit of that chrome theme, absolutely beautiful and mint conditioned um, C-clamp. As you can see, as we move up here, we have a seat post, and this seat post is also gonna be a VDC seat post, and it's stamped VDC. And luckily enough, I happened to find one that was a dark blue with a, a silver um, striped seat post. That's all fluted, of course, but it's absolutely, you know, uh, beautiful. Coming up to the top here, uh, last but not least, is gonna be this Cashimax. Aero seat, uh, I believe this is dated, oh, I wanna say 1983, I have to double check it, but uh, again, look at the, the Allen guts in there, that's what you wanna see, right? Absolutely beautiful uh, seat. Um, I can't get the date in there, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so this this is a, an absolutely nice seat. And you know, I, I acquired all of these parts um, you know, separately. It did take me quite some time to find these parts, but as you can see, you know, once it's all put together and um, it looks it looks absolutely uh, beautiful. So anyway, guys, there you have it. Um, you know, a, a really nice example of a, of a 1983 uh, VDC Changa done with all the uh, top notch parts from the 80s and um, another um, happy, um, part of my collection. So anyway, um, thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Maybe learn something or two about these bikes, and um, you know, give it a give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. I'm gonna probably do a few more videos. Um, I do have another Hutch uh, Trickstar that, uh, if I recall, I think it's 1984 build that I want to do. Uh, I have all the parts for it. It's just been sitting around. I haven't put it together. It does do. It does need to get powder coated, and I am going to go with a baby blue color. And the reason why I'm going with a baby blue is because I got Skyway Tough wheels from from back in the '80s that are baby blue, and that's going to be a beautiful bike. So I'm going to I'm going to build that out. Uh, maybe I'll do a build in this channel. I'm not quite sure yet how much time I have, but anyway, I'll do that. And one last detail. Oh yeah, I love those, and that's the treat right there. Those those uh, stem caps. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned and um, have a good day.